Well, Samaria Mission, uh, as our mission statement says, is a faith mission uh, and a ministry of Christ Baptist Church. Our focus uh, is evangelism and church planting with uh, the understanding that social ministry is vital to accomplish um, the first two as well. Samaria Mission was founded by a man named Henny Fenter who started doing work um, still back in the apartheid time uh, towards the more uh, rural villages amongst the, the black South Africans which was very much frowned upon back then. Um. Samaria Mission has been involved in a number of uh, church plants and also uh, not just church plants but also we focus quite a lot on building of church buildings and over the years Samaria Mission has built over 80 church buildings. This mission started from building churches to just evangelism, um, doing pastoral work and just, just training up guys. And um, then Samaria Mission just started growing bigger. They fell under the, the, the guidance or the umbrella of Christ Baptist Church, Jan Polokwani. We came to realize that you know, the building of church buildings is something that is a need, but not the greatest need. And we um, endeavor to change things um, so that we would rather be involved in building the church as Jesus said he would do. Um, and our focus shifted from building of church buildings um, to leadership training, discipleship, and um, that is what we've been doing for the last 10 years. He says now, the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. For churches to grow, to be God-glorifying churches, um, it does not take place overnight. It's a, it's, a, it's a process. And so we are committed to that. And that's why Paul writes this letter to the church in Ephesus. And So that they will understand that they are, as Christians, they are now different. Something we did discover is that many people, uh, because of their lack of, uh, particularly in Mozambique, that is, their uh, lack of education because of the war in the country, um, semi-literate, illiterate people. And one of the things that we realized we needed to do was embark on a teaching, not just a program, but a teaching method and a way of teaching that would be helpful to the people that fit in with the culture. What we have found is that, um, and this was the reason why we went to the chronological teaching, is that if God is the creator of all things, God is the one who is in control of all things. And if God is the one who is in control of all things, God is the one that should be obeyed and served and worshiped in all things. And that nothing else and no one else, be it uh, spirits or, or any other belief, um, should be attributed any of the glory and acknowledgement that is um, due to God the Father. All of this to say that we want to see the churches that are planted will still be there in 5, 10, 15, 20, 50, 100 years time. Spiritually, the people are in a very dark place. Um, ancestral worship is a major uh, problem. <laughs> The greatest um, spiritual challenge we have, and I'll speak from experience, that we just really experienced strongly from our previous trip in Mozambique in a village called Mukumbani, is um, 
Definitely the ancestral worship. Um, we, we deal with people that are so, they believe they have an understanding of God, but their way to God is through the ancestors. And um, they live in a bondage um, because everything, they, they live in a fear of the spirits, a, a fear of the dead. If they get sick, they don't go to the clinic, they go to the witch doctor. When we, you know, come and uh, bring Christ uh, to them, you know, they want to add this to their ancestral beliefs. Um, we had a um, quite a hair-raising experience the last outreach we had where um, the people were chanting, beating drums. On our previous trip we had a night where the guys started beating their drums because um, they were going through um, the young girls initiation um, and they worshipped the ancestors from 8 o'clock that night till the following morning when the sun came up. They kept, they made us have one of the worst nights sleep ever, you know, just in their worshiping the ancestors and we just reminded that their spiritual realm plays such a big part in their lives and that's a, a big challenge for us. Swing it over. If we're going to do a, a social program like Drill a Well, uh, the chief wants to slaughter a goat for the ancestors and you know we have to tell them that God owns all the water the ancestors have no control in whether we find water or not basically we do our evangelism by using short-term teams uh, most of which have come from the United States uh, it's a 10 day outreach in the bush. Without the short-term teams, um, I think that we would be the poorer for it. Um, yes, on the one hand, it does help to bring in finances, but on the other hand, it also helps to put us into touch with people who are like-minded, who have a heart for the lost. Um, those who want to reach out to people living um, in uh, rural areas like Mozambique, and want to come along and, and see what we're doing, be involved in what we're doing. At that point, I, I knew that I was a child of God. It's a hard, harsh terrain. Um, and for them to live in that uh, terrain, that uh, environment uh, that is so harsh, you can see how many Christians even waver. Uh, because they know that the work that many of them do is hard, hard work for them to go out, plow their lands, plant seeds. One of the main things which I help Sean Mullen with is, and which is the focus of us as a mission, is drilling wells within the villages. As um, Even now, currently as I speak, uh, Mozambique is going through what we could call a drought. Um, the Limpopo River, which at this time of the year um, is normally flowing um, at a steady, steady rate. We struggled to cross it with our vehicles at this time of the year, but currently now has a, a little stream of water in it. Um, and some places, some villages, there, there's no stream of water. They have to dig into the sand deep enough to get water to drink and to, to live. They see too little rain, drought. Um, they, there's a lot of doubt, there's a lot of doubt. Where is God in all of this? Or, or why are these things happening to us? Our goal is to try to put a, a well, um, an Afrida uh, pump in each village to get the, the people of Mozambique um, fresh drinking water. Well, this is a successful well, and the water is good, it's nice and sweet. Yeah, well, Several challenges that we experience is we have a lot of difficulty um, with customs and, and border control. Border officials that want a bit of extra money yeah, or they just want to make it difficult for us to, to get our equipment across. We often supply uh, the needs of the people and uh, even though we uh, in our development of maybe schools or clinics or well drilling uh, they then require us to pay an import duty on stuff that we are, are giving to the people and is a government responsibility and we've really struggled um, going through the, 
correct channels to get the right to bring that stuff in for nothing. So import tax has always been a difficult problem for us. But you know, um, what we see regularly is God is bigger than any situation and we always see God come through. And you cannot, you can only rejoice in the Lord. As a Christian, when you understand God's presence with you, we need to have workers in the field, and qualified workers that is, those who are, 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 are able to teach, those who are able to um, help to grow men, women and children into maturity in Christ. All laborers are welcome and uh, we really do uh, trust that the Lord will provide um, laborers that we need and as laborers are provided I do believe that God will open up more doors of opportunity for us to go to as well. We want to be in Mozambique as long as God allows us to be there and we are committed to that and we'll only move on even into new villages as God opens the doors for us to do that. Whatever the challenges are for us as missionaries, this is where we're committed to be. This is where God is open to us and that we need to remain faithful um, to, uh, to His Word and taking His Word to these people um, in that area. Because this is an important message. It's a message of life. For people who have suffered many, many, many years. For people who have suffered many, many, many years. Our hope is in God. We have to be able to live in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be able to live in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's when we come to Him.